Good morning and welcome to Believers in Christ Fellowship's online Bible study. We will be live in a few seconds. So open up your Bibles and follow along. Thank you for being here online. God bless you. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Pastor Randy here with Believers in Christ Fellowship and Made Free Church. I hope you guys are having a great morning. I know I am uh, for, uh, you know, just a, 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 just a real quick announcement, man. We are on all the podcasting platforms. Apple, <clears throat> you know, Believers in Christ is on Apple, all the podcasting platforms. And so is Reformed Pastor. Now, I still have Reformed Pastor. I'm not in the Reformed Doctrine, but I do believe in some of the Reformed Doctrine believe it has a lot of biblical, you know, but we'll get into that later. I don't want to get into a debate uh, online about that, but I do want to talk about the glorious city of God today. We're going to be in Revelation chapter 21, verses 9 through 27. And yes, I did the whole block because I think it's very significant, right? So, you know, you know, in, in Revelation 21, verses 9 through 27, we, you know, we encounter a vision that transcends the boundaries of the human imagination, right? So it's a vision of the new Jerusalem, the new glorious city of God. You know, in, in our everyday lives, we find ourselves longing for something more, right? Something greater than our that that greater than our trials and tribulations in the world. And Revelation 21 unveils a glimpse into that something more. Right. It, it reveals a city not built by human hands, but a city where every tear is wiped away and where every death and sorrow are no more. It's, it's a city that radiates with the, the very glory of God himself. Right. So the passage is not merely a description of future events. It's really an invitation, you know, to uh, uh, to hope and, and a call to faith. You know, as we unpack the symbolism and truths within these verses, right? You know, we'll, we we will discover that that the new Jerusalem is not merely a distant dream, but a present reality, a reality that shapes our lives here and now. So, join me today as we explore the foundations, gates, dimensioned materials, and most importantly, the spiritual significance of the new Jerusalem. Right? This vision. In, should inspire us to live with a renewed purpose and an anticipation of the glorious future of God has prepared for his people. Amen. Guys, I do have a few announcements, guys, that I want to share with you. Um, I do have a new book out right now. Let, let me go to Amazon real quick because I don't have a, the, the KDP open right now. So um, I do have a uh, a few books out there, really, you know. Um, but I just launched a new one, uh, yeah, a couple days ago and it's, uh, uh, walking in his ways. Right. And it's a guide to a biblical life. So, you know, that, that's available on Kindle and paperback. Right. Um, so go ahead and get that because I, I really poured a lot into it, you know, and, and I know that in my walk, I haven't really lived a biblical life and I just, you know, I, I it's hard, you know, it's hard, but this is a guide to that. And uh, I poured my heart into it and you know, living by the commandments and living to obedience to God is, is, is something that is hard to do, but we can do it through the Holy Spirit's power. But anyway, go out and buy that book. It's a really good book. 
and I have, and these are only on Kindle now. I'm still trying to get everything situated with uh, the paperbacks. I had them on paperback, but they didn't fit. So I got to redo them. So bear with me, okay? But I have the Apostle John, A Journey of Faith and Revelation. That's uh, that's on Kindle only. Recovery and Redemption, a 12-step program viewed through a biblical lens. So we take, what did I do? Is I took the model of, of Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcoxonomous, Anonymous, so I put it through a biblical lens. Reformation Revived. Uh, that's a great book, guys. Uh, go out and get these books. Now, all the proceeds and all the monies that go to these books, you know, goes towards our homeless church ministry. Uh, and, and, you know, we need to get some stuff. We need to buy food. We need to buy hygiene for them. You know, so that's where all the the, the funds go to, to these books here on Amazon. And I'm looking, if you guys know a, a good publisher, a good book publisher, please Throw it in the comments. Let me know. Reach out to me. You know, uh, let me know because I need a really, really good publisher right now. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we just thank you for all that you do in our lives. Lord, your word, our salvation, our assurance of salvation. You know, we just love you and we thank you, God. And uh, just minister to our hearts. Get this lowly preacher out of the way, Lord, and let your word go forward. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's read today's scripture. Uh, Revelation chapter 21, verses uh, verses 9 through 27, it says this. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls uh, full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me saying, come and I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. The radiance was like a rare jewel, like Jasper, clear as crystal. But it had a great wall, right, a, with 12 gates and the gates, uh, 12 angels. And, they, and, and, and on the gates were the name of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel, uh, Israel were inscribed, right? On the, 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 on the east, uh, three gates, the north, on the north, three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the wall, on the west, three gates, and on the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold measure uh, of gold to measure the city and its gates and the walls and the city lies four square the 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 length uh and the same as the width right he measured the city with his rod 12,000 stadia and the length and width of and height are equal he also measured the wall of 144 cubits in human measure which also uh, which is also an angel's measurement. The the, the wall was built to uh, of jasper, while the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The, 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 the first jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, and the fourth emerald, and the fifth onyx, and the sixth carnelian, and the seventh crystallite and the eighth barrel, and the ninth topaz, and the tenth crystal phase, and the twelfth janisith, uh, or and the eleventh janisus, and the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates were the twelve were, were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl. And the streets of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. And I saw the temple for for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need for sun or nor moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. We're almost done here. By its light, all nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And the gates will never be shut by day, and, and, and there will be no night there they will bring into the glory and honor of the nations but nothing unclean will ever enter it nor anyone who does what is detestable and false 
but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Ah, oh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> anyway, in the book of Revelation, the apostle John, you know, you got to understand he's exiled to Patmos, right? And it's granted a series of breathtaking visions that unveiled the unfolding of God's divine plan for humanity. Now, among these visions is perhaps one of the most awe-inspiring of uh, uh, is that of the New Testament, right? Revelation 21 verses uh, 9 through 11 provides the initial glimpse into the, the celestial city. It says this, And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls of the seven last plagues came to me and said, Come, I will show you the bride, the, the wife of the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit and a, to a great uh, a high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Its radiance is uh, uh, its its radiance like a rare jewel, like jasper, uh, a clear as crystal. Right now, imagine for a moment being in John's place. Right, you know, a humble servant of God, exiled to from, from society. Right. And suddenly transported in the spirit to a great high mountain. Right. There stands there. He stands on the precipice of eternity, on the edge of eternity where time and space converge. Right. And the heavenly realm is unveiled before his eyes. Right. The divine encounter is just not for John. Right. It's an invitation to all believers to catch a glimpse of the glorious future that awaits them. Right. It's a vision of hope in the midst of, of trials, promise, a, a promise that transcends the suffering of this world. We explore the elements of this vision and, 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 and we are beckoned to lift our eyes above the concerns of the earthly existence and set our hearts on the heavenly and eternal. Right. The angel's proclamation it's very profound, right? I come and I will show you the bride of uh, the, the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Now, this declaration is rich in symbolism and deeply rooted in, 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 the, in the biblical narrative. You know, throughout scripture, the image of the marriage is used to convey the intimate relationship between Christ and his church, right? The Lamb, of course, refers to Jesus Christ. Right. That the sacrificial lamb of God who redeemed humanity through his death and resurrection. Right. The church often symbolized as as the bride. Right. Is a collective body of believers who place their faith in Jesus Christ. Right. In this vision, the new Jerusalem embodies that the consummation of this divine union. Right. It, it, it is a place where Christ and his church are eternally joined. Right. Where where the love story between the bridegroom and his bride reaches its glorious climax. Right. That the city is not merely a physical construct, but a spiritual reality representing the unity, purity and intimacy of this eternal bond. Right. Now, now, now John beholds a, a new Jerusalem like he's struck by the brilliant glory. Right. And it says it's having the glory of God. Its radiance was like a rare jewel, like Jasper clear as crystal. You know, the, the radiance of the city is, is not a product of earthly materials or artificial illumination like we have. Right. Uh, you know, like, but, but, but it, it emanates from the very presence of God himself. Right. You know, it's just, just wrap your mind around that. Right. Right. You know, the, the glory of God is a recurring theme throughout the Bible. Right. Signifying his divine attributes. Right. His holiness and, 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 and his manifest presence, guys. Right. In, in Exodus, we see how the glory of the Lord uh, uh, descends upon Mount Sinai like a consuming fire. And the Israelites were awestruck by its brilliance right and, and, and here in revelation you know the, the new testament is bathed with that same divine radiance you know the the imagery of the city as jasper clear as crystal conveys the the purity and trans it conveys purity and transparency right in in, in, in the presence of god Right. There is no darkness, no hidden agendas, no impurity. It is a place where all is laid bare. Right. And all is made new. 
right? It's essential to grasp that the New Testament is not an earthly, you know, that, that, that we need to grasp that, that the New Jerusalem, not the New Testament, but the New Jerusalem is not an earthly city relocated from the uh, earthly realm, but it is a transcendent reality, a divine creation that defines our earthly understanding of cities, right? It exists in, in, in the eternal dimension, right? Where time and decay have no hold, right? The, the dimensions of this foundations and its materials, all of these elements convey a sense of divine perfection and order, right? The 12 gates bearing the 12 tribes, the names of the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 foundations inscribed the names of the 12 apostles, emphasizing the continuity of uh, and unity of, the, of God's redemptive plan throughout history, right? It, 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 in this heavenly city, past, present, and future converge into a harmonious whole. You know, the, the vision of the New Jerusalem holds uh, a, a very proud in, uh, implication for believers today. You know, it serves as a reminder that all our ultimate citizenship is not of this world, but in the heavenly realm. Right. The, the, the challenges and trials that we face in life are but temporary, while the glory of the eternal city awaits us. Right. Firstly, this vision calls us to a deeper intimacy with Christ. Right. Just as 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 the city is the bride of the lamb, we have individuals of believers are part of this glorious union. Our relationship with Christ is not merely religious affiliation. It's a spiritual marriage, right? As such, we are called to love, cherish, and remain faithful to him, right? The new Jerusalem represents the eternal uh, uh, culmination of this relationship, right? Urging us to live our lives with unwavering commitment to the bridegroom. And secondly, the glory of God displayed in the city reminds us of our ultimate purpose, right? To reflect God's glory in our lives, right? Uh, we, we are called to be vessels of his light in, in, in a world shrouded in darkness and evil, right? But just as the city brilliant uh, brilliance, you know, emanates from God, our lives should radiate his love, grace, and holiness to those around us. And lastly, the New Jerusalem is a source of hope and encouragement in the face of adversity. You know, when, when life's trials seem overwhelming, we can find solace, right, or comfort, right, in the knowledge that a glorious future awaits us, right? This vision serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed to us or and in us, right? So the, the vision of the New Jerusalem in verses 9 through 11 is a revelation of God's eternal plan, right? His His love for his people and, and, and the hope that awaits every believer, right? And as we journey further into these passages, you know, we will uncover more of layers of rich symbolism and its implication for our lives as followers of Christ. So, so let us hold fast to the vision as we continue uh, the exploration of the uh, of, of glorious city of God. Right? We're going to talk about the foundations and the gates now, man. And 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 this is really kind of an important thing. So, um, oh man. So in our exploration, you know, uh, of of that, you know, of the New Jerusalem described in Revelation twenty one. We've already witnessed an awe-inspiring vision of the celestial city. It's radiant in glory. It's 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 intimate connection to Christ as the bride and the and 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 the the wife of the Lamb. Right now, now let's turn our attention to the next remarkable aspects of this heavenly dwelling, the foundation and gates. Right now, uh, uh, Revelation twenty-one verses twelve to fourteen provides us a glimpse of the architectural and the symbolic elements that make the new Jerusalem a place of unparalleled beauty and significance, right? It says this, it had a great high wall and 12 gates and the gates of the, uh, and, and at the gates, 12 angels. 
And on the gates were the names of the 12 tribes of the son of Israel were inscribed. And on the east gates and on the north gates and on the south gates and on the west gates. And the wall of the city had the 12 foundations and on them the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So the New Jerusalem, right, is enclosed by a great wall. How weird, right? How weird is by great wall. And, you know, uh, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. You know, uh, the Pope is against us building a wall from Mexico, right? Against it, completely against it. But when he goes back to the Vatican, he has 16 foot walls that he hides behind. Weird, huh? Weird, huh? And right here we see uh, a high wall, right? And, 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 and the image that it immediately co conveys is the idea of security and protection, right? And, you know, the, the wall represents the divine protection and separation of God's people from all that is impure and evil, right? You know, that, that's why, uh, anyway, um, it, it reminds us of the walls of the ancient cities providing refuge and safety for the inhabitants, right? So, so the, the number of, of 12 is significant here, right? The 12 is a number of completeness, right? It, it, and, and in order, and, and, and it's also order in the Bible, like, right? so it's completeness and order in the Bible, right? It's context. It underscores the, the perfection of God's divine uh, design for his people, right? It, it, it's a reminder that nothing is left to chance in the plan of God. Every detail is meticulously crafted for our well-being and security. You know, as we gaze upon that magnificent wall, our attentions are drawn to the 12 gates, right? Each guarded by an angel and bearing the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, this imagery is, is rich in symbolism. It's representing the inclusivity and unity of God's covenant throughout history. The gates, uh, the, the gates are not mere entrance. They, they, they are portals into the presence of God. They, they serve as a reminder that God's invitation is open to all who seek him. The 12 tribes of Israel, despite their differences, were united under the uh, banner of God's covenant. You know, the, the, the same way believers from every nation, tribe, and tongue are invited to enter through these gates into the eternal city. You know, the, the placements of the great gates, you know, on all four sides, east, north, south, and west, underscores the universal nature of, of God's invitation. You know, there, there's no direction right, from which one can enter. There, there, there's no direction, right? There, there's 12 of them, right? It, it doesn't matter where you come from. What matters is that you come to God, right? So it doesn't matter if you're coming from east, west, south, right, that, that you just come to God. That The fact that the names of the 12 tribes of Israel that are inscribed on the great um, carries, carries a, a huge significance, right? It, it reminds us of the rich history of God's relationship with his chosen people. Each tribe had its unique identity and role in God's plan. Yet, yet they're, 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 yet they were all a part of the same covenant, right? I mean, they, they, let me re-say that again. Each tribe had its unique identity and role in God's plan, yet they all were a part of the same covenant. Right. The symbolism extends to us today. Right. Just just as the tribes were distinct, yet unified, you know, believers in Christ comes from a comes from a diverse backgrounds and cultures. Yet we are we, we are we are bound together by our common faith in the lamb. Right. The, the new Jerusalem welcomes us all, recognizing that our differences enrich the tapestry of God's creation. Now, now let's consider the 12 foundations of the city of the wall, each bearing the name of one of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, right? That this aspect of the New Jerusalem signifies the continuity and extension of God's redemptive plan from the Old Testament through the New Testament. Yeah, like the, the apostles uh, were chosen by Christ to be his witness and bearers of his message to the world. Their names on the foundation represents the foundational role they played in this establishment of the church, 
right? Throughout their teaching and writings, they laid the doctrinal and spiritual foundation upon which the church is built. The presence of, of both names of the tribes and, and the apostles enforces the idea that the new Jerusalem is a place where the old and new covenants meet, right? Where, where God's promise of Israel find their fulfillment in the work of Christ and the spread of the gospel to all nations. You know, yeah, guys, as, as we contemplate the foundations, you know, and, and, and gates in the new uh, Jerusalem, we we're reminded of several vital lessons uh, uh, for, for our lives as followers of Christ. Firstly, we are called to embrace the inclusivity of God's covenant, right? Just as the gates of the city welcome people from all directions, we are to welcome and embrace fellow believers from diverse backgrounds, cultures, and traditions. Our unity in Christ transcends our differences, right? Secondly, the imagery of the gates and foundation reminds us of the importance of knowing our spiritual heritage, understanding the history of God's covenant and Bible history and stuff like that with his people, right? You know, uh, uh, I think it was John Owen said, or no, it was maybe Spurgeon. I forget who said it, but uh, he said that every Christian should know Bible history as well as the Bible, right? So from Israel to the church, you know, the, 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 the foundations and the gates remind us, enriches us uh, uh, of, our, uh, of our faith, right? And deepens our appreciation of God's plan throughout history. And lastly, we should see ourselves as part of this ongoing story in God's uh, redemptive work. You know, just as the apostles were the foundation of the early church, we play a role in building up the body of Christ today. Our faithfulness in proclaiming the gospel and living out the teachings of Jesus contra uh, contributes to our ongoing construction of the spiritual city. So, so the foundation and the gates of the New Jerusalem are not merely architectural elements, but but symbols of God's inclusive covenant, his protection and unity with his people throughout history. You know, as we continue our journey into the depths of Revelation 21, you know, uh, we will uncover more layers and meanings, you know, that uh, and significance within this celestial city. You know, may the insights inspire us to live as citizens of the New Jerusalem you know, welcoming all who seek God faithfully, building upon the foundation laid by the apostles. And I'm going to say this, and I really want you guys to understand. Anyone who calls himself a prophet or a prophetess, right? Or they call themselves an apostle, okay? Are, are doing it for the title, doing it for, look at me, look at me, look at me, Right? They want you to look at them. It's all about the title, right? There's no such thing as a modern day prophetess or modern day prophet. And, the, and, and there is no, no office of apostle. There's no, you know, giving new revelation to this, the canon of, of, of scripture. This canon of scripture is closed, right? So those two offices are null and void. They're no longer exist. And no, I'm not a cessationist. But those two offices, is there prophecy? Absolutely. But you calling yourself a prophet or a prophetess, you're doing it so everybody looks at you because they want they, they want you to pr prophesy over them. But you're prophesying over them. It's not real prophecy. Can't command God to do something. Can't command the Holy Spirit to do something he doesn't want to do. So you can ask him, but probably ain't going to happen. You know, so... So those two offices, I just want to make it understood that it's closed. And, and, and I'm having a rough time with that because I see that all over TikTok, man. Prophet this, apostle this. You know what I mean? So sorry, I just got up on a little tangent. All right. So we're going to talk about the dimensions and materials, right? So, you know, as at, you know, in, in, in the New Jerusalem in Revelation 21, right, we arrived at two remarkable as aspects that contribute to the breathtaking beauty and significance right the dimensions and materials of this heavenly city right these elements provide you know insights into the nature of our internal dwelling and 
the eternal glory of God. It says this in, in, in verses 15 to 21, it says and, and that the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod, a gold measuring rod to measure the city and its gates and walls. And, and the city lies four squares. Its length is the same width. And it's and he measured the, the city with the rod, 12,000 stadia. Its uh, length and width are the height uh, and height are equal, right? He also measured the wall, 144 cubits by the measurement, which is also the angel, angel's measurement. The wall of the city was built in Jasper while the city uh, uh, the wall was built in Jasper while the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. First, the first, it was Jasper. The second was Sapphire. The gate was agate. The fourth with emerald. The fifth with onyx. The sixth with carnelian. The seventh with crystallite. The eighth with beryl. With nine, with ninth with topaz. And tenth was crystal phrase the 11th of Janus and the 12th Amasis and the 12 gates uh, were, uh, were 12 pearls. Each of the gates were made of a single pearl and, and, and the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. Right. So, so think of this, uh, the, the heavenly vision of, of, of 21, you know, is, is unveiled with precision, emphasizing the intentionality of the perfection of the new Jerusalem. Right, the the angels use you. Uh, the, the angel uses a gold measuring rod to measure the city and its gates and its walls. You, you, it, 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 to, the, the use of gold, right? It, it's a symbol of purity and divine value. Right, underscores the sacred nature of this measurement. Measurements themselves are significant, guys. Right, you know uh, the city is uh, uh, described as four square in length. Right. And width and equal uh, and height that are equal 12,000 stadia in each dimension. Right. This remarkable symmetry is unlike any earthly city that signifies the perfection and complete the completeness. Right. It reminds us that the new Jerusalem is not uh, a haphazard creation. Right. But it's meticulously designed according to God's divine plan. The number 12 frequently occurring in this vision, right, signifies, you know, divine order and completeness, right? It, it appears uh, in the number of the gates, the foundations, and even the measurements of the wall, right? Each element of the New Jerusalem design is a part of a harmonious whole reflecting God's divine purpose for his people. And one of the central elements of the New Jerusalem is the Great Wall. Right. Think about that. Jerusalem's going to New Jerusalem is going to have a great wall. It, it's described as, as being made uh, of Jasper, a precious gem known for its various colors and patterns. Right. In, in this context, Jasper, Jasper represents purity and beauty. Right. Uh, the, the wall, you know, being constructed in such a material signifies the the impenetrable purity and holiness that surrounds the dwelling place of God. Also, the wall's measurements are revealed uh, uh, to be 144 cubits, right? Think of it, 144, 144, 12, 12, 12 tribes, 12 apostles, 144, 144. It all has significance, right? Uh, which also the, the the angels, which 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 is also the measurement of, of of angels, right? That this measurement, whether in human or angelic terms, signifies the completeness and perfection. The wall symbolizes God' protective presence, spreading, so, you know, separating the, the the holy from the profane, and the 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 ensuring the the ensuring the eternal security of the city's inhabitants. Right. While, while, while the wall is adorned with Jasper and, and the city describes itself as being made pure, resembling clear glass. The image is one of unparalleled beauty and transparency. Right. Gold in the Bible is often associated with purity and divinity. Right here, it symbolizes the absolute holiness and perfection of God in the New Jerusalem. You know, think about it. Who's the ones that are trying to stop the wall being built here on, on the Mexican border? 
and here we have a huge wall that separates the the you know the the unclean from the holy city of jerusalem so they're there right they're there they're they're seeing all this right you know the, the people that are going to hell they're seeing all this you know and 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 we have to understand guys that this is really going to happen right so the transparency of 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 the gold is a reflection of the city's purity right it, it's not marred with impurities or hidden agendas right it is the presence of god there's nothing to hide and all is laid bare right that the city's transparency also emphasizes the accessibility to the glory of god right that, that there's no need for artificial illumination right the city itself radiates with divine light right the the other remarkable aspect of the new jerusalem is its foundation adorned with dazzling array of precious jewels right that the foundation uh, it, with their their stunning gemstones serve as both as a testament to the city's beauty and the reflection of the spiritual significance of the 12 apostles right each Jewel carries its own unique symbolism, uh, symbolism, right? For instance, jasper symbolizes purity. Sapphire represents divine wisdom. Emerald signifies the resurrection and new life. Together, they paint a vivid and pure and multifaceted beauty of riches of God's plan for his people. You know, the presence of these jewels um, in the foundation highlights the, the continuity between you know, the, the old net Testament and the new Testament, right. And, and, and it just as the 12 tribes of Israel's and the 12 apostles of the lamb are united in the new, new Jerusalem. So are the promises of the covenants of the old test, old and new covenants, harmoni harmoniously united in Christ, <laughs> the new, the, the new Jerusalem beauty is, is further magnified by the 12 gates each constructed from a single pearl, right? Pearls in ancient times were considered precious and rare, right? Often associated with purity and wealth, you know, and in here they, they symbolizes the richness and purity of God's grace and salvation. You know, the imagery of pearls uh, as gates are significance, right? Uh, the, 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 it, it signifies the entrance into the new Jerusalem is not based on one's worldly wealth or status but the simplicity of faith each gate is a reminder that the invitation to enter god's presence is open to all who believe regardless of their background or earthly possessions you know that, that that's what it symbolizes guys that's what it symbolizes and lastly we encounter that that the, of, of the city which which is also described as pure gold, like transparent glass, right? That the, the, the golden street signifies the holiness and divine nature of the city's thoroughfares, right? It, it, it is a, a path of, of, of which the redeemed walk in the presence of God, right? The, the transparency of the streets, you know, emphasizes the, the absolute purity and clarity of God's divine plan. You know, as as we walk on these streets, on this street, right, we, we we do so in the light of God's presence, right, with no darkness or hidden agendas, right? That the, the dimensions and materials of the New Jerusalem hold, you know, profound lessons to believers today. They they serve as a reminder of of our eternal hope and destiny in Christ, right? That they, they call us to live with awareness of the eternal. Right, just as the New Jerusalem's dimensions are perfect and symmetrical, our lives should reflect God's divine order and purpose. Our focus should be on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And these elements remind us of the absolute purity of God's presence, right? Just as the city uh, 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 is made with, with transparent gold, right? Our lives should be characterized by the transparency and holiness, right? In Christ, we are called to live in purity and integrity, you know, with, with nothing to hide. Right. You know, and, and, and the new Jerusalem's accessibility through the 12 gates 
of Pearl underscores the universal nature of God's invitation of salvation, right? We're called to share this message of grace and salvation with people, welcoming them into the heavenly city through the faith in Jesus Christ. So that the dimensions and materials of the New Jerusalem revealed in uh, Revelation 15 through 21 are not merely ornamental details, but symbols of God's divine plan, right? His purity and accessibility to his grace, right? So as we continue to, 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 to journey through, you know, God's glorious city of, of, of God, right? May these insights inspire us uh, to live with eternal perspective, right? Walking in the purity and transparency of God's presence, right? And, and sharing the message of salvation with all who seek entrance through the golden gates of, of pearl. Amen. So in the, in the celestial vision of the new Jerusalem described in, in Revelation 21, you, we marvel at its, its dimensions, its materials, its foundation, its gates, right? Now I want to dive further into the divine revel of this divine revelation. And, and we encounter two aspects that radiate with spiritual significance, right? The light, and the glory of the city, right? So let's dive into that. It says in Revelation 22 through 27, he saw, I saw no temple in the city for the, for the temple of the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, right? So I saw no temple in the city, right? For it's, for it's, it's the, it is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need for sun nor moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light and its lamp is the lamb for it is by light the it's by its light will all nations walk and all kings of the earth will bring bring their glory into it and its gates will never be shut by day and there will be no night there there will be that they will bring into the glory and honor of all the nations right? But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those that are written in the Lamb's book of life, right? So the, the, the first striking revelation in this passage is that there is no temple in Jerusalem, right? This declaration holds implication of our, our, of our understanding of, of, of the city's spiritual dynamics, right? Temples in the ancient world, Right, where places of worship, sacrifice, and encounter with the divine. So, and 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 now in, in in the New Jerusalem, there is no need for such a structure because the city itself is is the immediate presence of God. Right, God's dwelling in the city is not confined to a specific location, but rather His presence permeates every corner, every street, and every heart. Right, the New Jerusalem is not merely a place where God resides; it's a place where His glory is manifested in every aspect of existence. Right, it signifies the fulfillment of God's promise to dwell among His people in Exodus twenty-five eight, but but in a way beyond human comprehension. Right, the absence of physical temple in the New Jerusalem is closely connected to the second extraordinary aspect in the vision the city's source of light, right? In, in stark contrast to the earthly cities that rely on, on, on the sun and, and we ri rely on artificial lighting at night, right? You know, like you, you see that, you know, uh, 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 anyway, um, the new Jerusalem requires neither, right? The, the reason is breathtakingly simple, right? The glory of God gives it light and the lamp is its, is the lamb, Right. The glory of God is the source of light, illuminates the entire city, right? This direct uh, 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 continuation of, of the imagery that we find throughout the Bible, where God's glory is often associated with brilliant, radiant light, right? For instance, the Old Testament, when God's presence filled the tabernacle, right? As described you know, as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night in Exodus chapter 40, verses 34 through uh, verses 34 to 38. Here in the New Jerusalem, the glory of God reserves serves as 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 an unceasing, everlasting source of divine light. Right. The lamb who is none other than Jesus Christ. 
right? Is the city's lamp, right? And th th this association between Jesus and light is a reoccurring theme in, in the New Testament. Jesus, is, Jesus himself declared in John 18, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The new Jerusalem, right? He is the eternal source of the light, dispelling darkness, both physical and spiritual. Wrap your mind around that. Right, that the divine light bathes in the uh, in 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 the New Jerusalem is is a perpetual brilliance that has implications for the city inhabitants and for us as believers today. You know, firstly, the divine light signifies the absence of spiritual darkness and deception, and in the presence of God's glory, there is no room for falsehoods or disease or deceit. Everything is laid bare. And nothing unclean or detestable will enter it. It reminds us of the call to live in the light. As the Apostle John, as the Apostle John writes, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. In 1 John 1 5. You know, in the New Jerusalem, this truth is realized in the fullest sense. Secondly, the divine light symbolizes guidance and revelation, right? The nations and kings of the earth are drawn to the light of the city. This signifies the new Jerusalem, right? Is a place of spiritual enlightenment and revelation, right? The, the, the truth that, uh, the, the truth that, that God's glory is made known to all. It is a place where where the redeemed walk in the light of God's presence, free from the confusion and uncertainty that characterizes life on earth. You know, the, the striking feature of the New Jerusalem, right, is the absence of night, right? It, it, it its gates are never shut by day, and 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 there is no there is no night there, right? This is both literal and a symbol symbolic significance literally the new jerusalem you know signifies as the continuous access to god's presence and protection night in the bible often symbolizes as as darkness danger and uncertainty in the new jerusalem there is no need for periods of darkness or hiddenness god's glory is ever present right and and his protection is unceasing symbolically right the absence of night signifies the complete absence of evil sin and spiritual darkness right in the new jerusalem is a place of, of perpetual holiness and purity right it, it is a city where where the redeemed live in unbroken fellowship with god free from the struggles and temptation of a fallen world the passage tells us that the kings of earth will bring glory to into it you know this statement carries layers of significance right that the earthly realm uh kings and rulers often sought to display their own wealth, power, and achievements. But in, in the New Jerusalem, their focus is entirely different, right? The kings of the earth are representing the highest earthly authorities and bring their glory into the city, right? This, this means that human achievement and, 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 and honors, even in the prestigious and the powerful, find their true value in the significance and presence of God, right? Their, their light. The light of his glory, all earthly glory is eclipsed and a true worship is offered, you know, to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, right? So additionally, you know, this declaration suggests that, it, that the ultimate fulfillment of God's redemptive plan for all nations, right? The new Jerusalem is not an exclusive enclave, right? But it is a place where representative of all nations, cultures, and backgrounds gather to bring God, glory to God, right? It underscores the universal nature of God's invitation and salvation through, through faith in Jesus Christ. You know, as, as we contemplate the glorious light in the new Jerusalem, you know, and the eternal city uh, and the eternal day that it, it enjoys, you know, we are reminded of the vital requirement of entering this celestial city right? Being written in the Lamb's book of life. This passage concludes with a solemn decoration, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable 
and false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life, right? This emphasizes the exclusivity of salvation through faith in Christ. Right, Only those who have accepted the redeeming work of the Lamb, whose names are recorded in the Lamb's book of life, are granted access into the New Jerusalem. Right, it, It's a reminder that the divine light and glory of the city is, is not acceptable and not accessible through human effort or merit, but solely through the grace and mercy of God. Right? So the light and glory of the new Jerusalem, you know, holds implication for believers today. And it does. So firstly, you know, uh, uh, the call to live in the light of God's presence, right? That's what it does. It calls us to live in the light of God's presence, right? Just as the new Jerusalem has no night, we are called to walk in the light of Christ, allowing his truth to guide us, uh, our steps and dispel the darkness and sin and deception. They remind us of the um, exclusivity of salvation through faith in, in in Jesus Christ, right? You know, just, just as one of, of of just only as those written in the Lamb's Book of Life will enter the New Jerusalem, right? So, so, so to to so too are we called to share the message of the salvation? Sorry, I had other things on my mind with others, right? That that they may also be included in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, lastly, the light and glory of the New Jerusalem is inspired us to worship and glory and glorify God. Right? You know, in the presence of such divine brilliance, the earthly achievements and honors pale, pale in comparison. You know, we are called uh, uh, to offer our lives as a living sacrifice, bringing glory to the King of Kings. You know, so so. The, the light of the the light of the and glory of of the new Jerusalem revealed here in Revelation twenty two to twenty seven, it, it's not just a radiant uh, is not just radiant features, but you know symbol of God's divine presence and guidance and purity, right? You know, and 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 as we continue our journey, you know, may these insights inspire us to walk in the light of Christ, right? Share the message of salvation and offer our worship to God whose glory illuminates the eternal city. You know, throughout this explore, exploration, the last couple of days of Revelation 21, we've embarked on a journey of, of, of a wonderful and spiritual revelation, you know, diving deep into the vision of the new Jerusalem, the celestial city, that's indescribable beauty, purity, and eternal significance. Right. From the dimensions and materials to to the light of its glory, every aspect of the heavenly dwelling has beckoned us to consider that the truth it unveils for believers. Right. The New Jerusalem is not just a mere architectural marvel, but a spiritual reality. Right. It transcends the limits of human imagination and earthly earthly existence. This place is where divine order, perfection, and completeness are for fully realized, right? And 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 as we've seen, the symmetry of the precious metal uh, and and the foundations adorned with jewels also bear witness to God's meticulous design and His unwavering commitment to the, His covenant with His people. Also, the New Jerusalem symbolizes the rich, multifaceted, uh, 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 you know. Uh, let me let me read the new Jerusalem symbolism is rich and multifaceted. There we go, right? Uh, it reveals a, a city of, of the old and new covenants that where they, they converge, right? Where, where, where the promises made to the 12 tribes of Israel find their fulfillment in the ministry of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, right? This divine unity underscores the eternal co uh, continuity uh, of God's redemptive plan. So it, it the, the eternal, the eternal, uh, uh, continues, right? So it's kind it's continuity. I, I can never say that word. I use that word a lot, but I, I can never say it correctly. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so, so the gates of the new, new Jerusalem are constructed with, from pearls, right? Uh, and, and are open to all who believe in Christ, regardless of the background or statutes right? Or just status, right? You know, uh, 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 um, 
it is it is a city that that welcomes the nations and kings of the earth you know uh, and it reminds us of the universal scope of god's invitation to salvation that the new jerusalem you know human uh, in, in the human glory eclipse by the radiance uh the radiant glory of god right and, and the earthly achievements find their ultimate significance in worshiping the king of kings you know the absence of night in the new jerusalem signifies the the complete absence of the spiritual darkness and deception you know it, it's internal it's eternal decay i mean excuse me it's eternal it's eternal day right the, there there's no need for secrecy or hiddenness right god's glory is ever present and his protection is unceasing. It is a place of perpetual holiness and purity where the redeemed live in unbroken fellowship with God, right? That the divine light that bathes the city serves as a powerful symbol of God's revelation and guidance, right? The new Jerusalem, the nations and kings of the earth are drawn to the light, seeking spiritual enlightenment and understanding. It's a place where, where the redeemed walk in the light of God's presence, free from confusion or uncertainty that often characterize life on earth. The ultimate, the ultimately the new Jerusalem is a city of exclusivity and inclusivity, right? It's exclusive in that only those written in the Lamb's book of life, you know, have the privilege of entering. Salvation is granted solely through faith in Jesus Christ, yet it's inclusive in what it welcomes believers from every corner of the world from every background and culture uniting them in the in in worship and fellowship before the throne of god you know as we conclude our journey here uh and, and i know I've, I've taken up a lot of you guys' time but you know uh of 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 the glorious city of god right let us carry with us the truths and timeless lessons that these visions impart. Let us walk in the light of Christ, live in purity and transparency of his presence, right? Share the message of salvation with all who seek, you know, to, to uh, you know, seek entrance through the gates of pearl, right? And, and let us worship the King of Kings, recognizing that his glory, all earthly glory fades away, but recognizing that it's in his glory, right? The new Jerusalem is not merely a vision of the future, but a spiritual reality that shapes our lives here and in, and now, right? It, it reminds us of the, of the ultimate citizenship in the heavenly realm. The ultimate purpose is to reflect God's glory. And our ultimate hope is in the glorious future that he has prepared for his people. You know, as, as we continue our earthly journey, uh, the vision of the new Jerusalem should inspire us to live with an eternal perspective, you know, to walk in the light of Christ, to proclaim the message of salvation to a world that so desperately needs it, right? To proclaim the message of salvation to people who think they're Christians, but not, you know, for the glorious city of God beckons us onward, inviting us to participate in the unfolding drama of God's divine uh, plan for humanity. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this, your, this, this, this awesome word. Thank you for the people that are going to be listening on Facebook, YouTube, Lord, and uh, uh, even on our podcast, Lord. We just thank you for all that you do, Heavenly Father. You're such an amazing dad, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, go in peace. Pray for me, man. You know, I got to go down and um, I to go down to, to San Bernardino and uh you know for a job interview so i gotta hurry up and go it's 6 30 i gotta be out by eight but guys just just do me a favor i got a job interview today and i'm kind of hoping i get it i'm still real hurt you know i got a bulge in my back there's a lot of things going on with me uh health wise uh that uh it's not good it's not good at all so if you guys can pray for me that would be great if you guys can um also if you guys can can just uh you know, just pray for me, man. You know what I mean? I mean, that's really all I can say, you know, pray for me because I'm, I've been in a lot of pain, uh, for the last six months, you know, with, with, you know, nothing really, no, no narcotics. Cause I won't put anything narcotic in my, my system. So just pray for me guys. All right. God bless you. You guys have a great day and may God rich, rich, uh, richly bless.